said, we're going to talk about angles. This is called angle relationships is what they're talking about right here. So let's actually draw some angles. Let's get rid of that. Okay. And um, basically, this is, this is really a lot of vocab. And there is going to be some work involved. There is going to be some math involved. But a lot of this is just understanding the relationships between these angles, what the names are. All right. I'm not going to ever have a quiz where I have you, like, write out a definition for something. I told you that at the beginning of the year. I know a lot of... A lot of geometry teachers do that. They have you memorize theorems and they have you memorize definitions and write them all out. I'm not a big fan of that because I don't really think that makes you learn it. Okay, I'm gonna. I want you to learn it, even though you're not gonna actually have to memorize them for a test or a quiz. But I still want you to mem or I still want you to learn what these things are because we're gonna talk about these uh, quite often. All right, so here we go. Let's do the first set of angles. Now I'm not gonna put the arrows technically. Uh, the side of an angle is a ray, isn't it? And what does a ray have? It's got an end point and it does what on the other end? Keeps on going. And what shows in geometry that it keeps on going? An arrow. But for the sake of just drawing a million arrows here, do you mind if I just don't draw the arrow? We okay with that? <laughs> What's that? Dean says, no, you better put the arrow on there. <laughs> All right, well, so I don't want that thing. All right, so let's draw another one about like that. And let's draw another one about like that. All right, so here we go. Oops. Why isn't it? Uh oh, what's going on? Oh, there we go. I don't know why I didn't. Still don't know why I didn't do that. Oh well, who cares? Uh, let's do this. Let's talk. Let's say this is angle one, and let's say this one right there is angle two. So our first word. Look at these two angles right here. Um. I say they're next to each other, all right? This angle one and this angle two are right next to each other. Both angles share something. What do they share? They actually share a couple things. They share a vertex, right? They have a common vertex, Rachel. They share a side as well, okay? See this side right here? They also share the same side, all right? So that's two things that are true about these two angles that are next to each other. But instead of saying angles that are next to each other, that doesn't sound very geometric, does it? we got to get a little fancier with that. And we use this word. We use adjacent. Anybody hear that word before? Yes. Some people actually use that in regular conversation. They say, you know, well, my room is adjacent to Mr. Barry's room. All right? Not you probably won't hear kids say that <laughs> too often, but people that are a little older that have a little bit more of a you know more of a vocabulary might use that kind of word. You know, they'll say, "Oh, my house is adjacent to the ballpark," or "My house is adjacent to this road," or whatever. You know, you may hear that in normal conversation. That's what it means. It means it's next to it. All right, and listen for that. I'd say this every year uh, when I teach this. You know, kids say, you know, I never heard anybody say that word. And then you say it one time in here, and then it seems like, you know, every so often I hear people say the word adjacent just because you brought it to my, you know, attention. You might have heard people use the word before, but you never even thought about it. But now you may, uh, now you may think about it. So anyway, it's adjacent. means next to. So in order for angles to be adjacent to each other, there needs to be three things that have to be true. They have to have a common we already talked about these. I'm just going to write them down. Common vertex. All right. So the two angles must have a common vertex. But not in every situation, the two angles that have a common vertex are adjacent angles. They have to, they have, to um, have these three things that are true. So they have to have a common vertex. What was the second thing we said? A common side. Now, when I say common, what does that mean? It means it's shared. Right, it's shared by both of them, okay? So this angle one has this side right here. Angle two has this side right here. So it's got a common side. And both angles, one and two, both have that same um, vertex right there. Now three, this is the one that's a little bit weird. They must have no common interior points. So there can't be anything in between? Um, well, let, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that statement you just made, but I'll, I'll show it like this. Let's go to a different color. Watch, if I put a point right here, that's in the interior of which angle? One. Angle one, okay? And if I put a green point right here, that's in the interior of what angle? Two. Angle two. Can I have a point, all right, that is in the interior of both of these at the same time? And some people say, yeah, if I put one right here. But is that in the interior? No, that's actually what? 
it's actually on, right? It's actually on. It's not in the interior. That's just on. So there's no way that I could put a point that's all that's in one and is at the same time is also an angle two. So that means there are no common interior points. So does it fill? Does do these two angles one and two? Do they fulfill all three of those requirements? Yeah, they do. All right. So they have a common vertex. Yep. They have a common side, yep, and they don't have any common interior points. There's no way I could draw a point anywhere that's in both angle one and angle two. Make sense? And you're probably thinking, well, how in the world would I have um, a common point? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to show you. <laughs> Didn't you ask that, John? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so watch. Uh, let's have this, let's have this, and let's have this right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this, um, we'll just use one and two again, and watch this. This whole big angle, I'm going to give a name. I'm going to call it angle three. Is that all right? So we'll get a little bit tricky here. Let's go orange this time. Now watch. Uh, let's look at angle one and angle three. Forget angle two right now. Just look at angle one and angle three. Are angle one and angle three um, adjacent angles? Well, let's see. Do they have a common vertex? Where's the vertex for angle one? It's right there. What about angle three? And remember, angle three is this whole big angle. They got the same vertex, don't they? Is that alone enough to make them adjacent angles? No, it's not. What about a common side? Okay. Well, look at this side right here. That side is an angle one, and it's also an angle three, isn't it? You follow me on that? Okay, so they do have a common side. So, yep, they have a common vertex. They have a common side. What about this? Do they have no common interior points? Because watch what happens. What if I put a point here? Is that point in angle three? Yeah. yeah. Is it in angle one? No. All right, so so far we don't have any common interior points. But guess what? What if I put one right here? That's in both of them, isn't it? That's the interior angle. Nico, you following me on this? Okay, that's in, that's in the interior of both of these angles. It's in angle one, and guess what? It's also in angle three, isn't it? So does this, is this fulfilled? Okay, is that requirement fulfilled? No, it's not. Because it does have a common interior point. Look, this point right here, we'll call it point A. That point right there is in both. It's in angle one, and it's in angle three. So it's a common interior point. Well, this requirement says there should be no common interior points, and that's not fulfilled. So is angle one and three for, uh, adjacent angles? No, they're not. Make sense? Yes? There was no points in there. Well, there's always points in there. We're just labeling where the points are. Okay, there's points everywhere. All right, I'm just saying that's where one of the points are. Okay, I'm just labeling where the points are. Does that make sense? Okay, so there you go. So that's adjacent angles. So... Um, and if you look in the book, there's some examples. There's a couple examples of angles that are not adjacent, and a few more than this. I'm just not going to go through every different scenario that there could possibly be. Come here. Angle three. Angle three is this whole. No, number three. This right here, not okay. If it says no common interior points, look at this angle. This point right here, angle A. What? Uh, what angle is it in? It's in angle one, right? And also where? In angle three, because angle three is this whole big thing, isn't it? All right, so it's in one and three. So what does that mean about angle A? There is a common interior point, correct? So if angle A is in both of them at the same time, that means there is a common interior point. What does this requirement say? There cannot be any in common interior points. Look at this. Look at angle one. Is there any way that this point right here is in both of these angles? No. Is What about this green one right here? Is it in both? No. Is there anywhere that I could put a point that's going to be common with one and two that's going to be in both of them? No. So that, that means that there are no common interior points, and that's what that requirement says. There cannot be any common interior points. You can't have a point that lies in both of them at the same time. You got it? How would a random point in the interior mess up an adjacent angle? Mess it up? Yeah. Well, how, how would it not make it adjacent? If it, if just well, then we're saying right here, angle 1 and 3, watch, angle 1 and angle 3 are not adjacent. 
it kind of looks like it, right? Because it fulfills the first two requirements, right? But the but having a point that lies in both of them. See, it overlaps. Basically, if the angle overlaps with each other, all right? So, and that's what's happening here. Look, angle one is kind of in angle three, isn't it? Do you see that? See, angle one is this angle right here. Everything in angle one is also in angle three. So everything, every point that's in angle one is also going to be in angle three. That means you have a bunch of common interior points. So that right there shows you that you can't, um, that they're not adjacent. I think we're spending too much time on this. We need to move on quickly. Well, isn't any point in angle two going to be in angle three too? Yeah, I'm just talking about one and three though. Okay, I said forget about angle two right at the beginning. So let's just forget about two. Um, what if I said angle one and two? Are one and two right here adjacent? Yeah, 1 and 2 are adjacent. Is 1 and 3 adjacent? No. What about 2 and 3? Are 2 and 3 adjacent? No, they're not adjacent either, are they? All right, so 2 and 3 are not adjacent as well. All right, make sense? All right, enough of that. We spent way too much time on that. Let's move on. All right, let's take a look at this uh, situation right here. What if we had, we kind of talked about this yesterday, I believe, or day before, forget. What if you had that situation right here, and you had angle 1, and angle 2. Now what did we say? These two angles form what kind of an angle? We talked about that I think two days ago. A straight angle. Okay, it's a straight line, yeah, but it's also a straight angle as well. But we call this, when you have two angles, two angles, not three or four or five, when you have two angles that form a straight angle, make 180 degrees, we call that a linear pair. Alright, so there are going to be some times where they're going to describe, okay, this angle and this angle are a linear pair. And you got to know what they're talking about when they talk about a linear pair. Well, linear, what, do you th what word is in that word linear? Line. Line, okay? I usually have people say ear is in linear. <laughs> well, yeah, but what math word, what geometry word? Line is in it, right? Yeah. When what is pair? And near is in it. Oh, yeah, okay. In. And in, very good, okay? But we're looking at the math word, which is line. What about the word pair? What does the word pair mean? Two, right. So that means there's two angles, right? Not three, not four, not five. Wow. Two angles that form a line is a linear pair. Pretty simple, isn't it? That's about it. Okay, here's another one. Here's a line here and a line here. What do they do right here? Intersect, intersect each other. Okay, so if you have two lines that intersect each other, intersect you actually have a bunch of angles that are formed, don't you? Now, there's a relationship between some of these angles. Look at the angles that are across from each other. Do you see one and two? They're across from each other. That's the best way I can describe it. They're straight across from each other. Um, they're not adjacent. Okay. Now, they do have a common interior, they do have a common vertex, but they don't have a common side, do they? All right. See one and two? So they're not adjacent angles, Okay, but they are um, a something that we call vertical angles. And we're going to use this a lot. This is a really common situation here. So right? Three and four horizontal angles? No, they're still called vertical angles. Vertical is not really referring to like up and down. I could have this whole thing slant even a little bit. Just because it looks like they're straight up and down, it doesn't really make any difference. They're just across from each other. So which ones are vertical angles? Let's write it down here. So angle one and angle two are vertical angles. So what do you think the other pair of vertical angles are? Three and, Three and four. Good. The ones that are across from each other are vertical angles. Okay? Do you see that? So one and two are vertical angles. Three and four are vertical angles. And you're saying, well, big deal. Well, it actually is a big deal because we have an, a little bit later on, if you, and they don't say this. Oh, yeah, they do. The very next thing they do say this, and they should. Vertical angles, oh, better hurry. Vertical angles are actually congruent to each other or equal. Okay, That's the symbol for congruent. Remember that? Vertical angles are congruent. So I can I cannot just say that 1 and 2 are vertical. I can be more specific and say that 1, angle 1 is what? Congruent to. Right, is congruent or equal to angle 2. What can I say about 3 and 4? Angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Or you can use the word congruent. I kind of use them interchangeably. I'm fine with either way. All right? That's going to show up a ton. We're going to be doing a lot of that kind of stuff. That's going to be one of your favorite things, right, is to see that vertical angles are equal. And I'm going to show it like that. All right, the two arcs mean that those two angles are equal. The one arc means those two 
angles are equal. All right, let's go on to the next one.